Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I was making a part, uh, running a batch of about 40 of these parts, and it had a deep slot in it. Or deep, in my opinion, is anything where the slot is deeper than the width of the cutter. It was uh, a 350 thou deep slot, a uh, little wider than a quarter inch, so not crazy. And the reason I'm making this video is I think a lot of folks out there who watch my channel are probably like me, where where you're confident and comfortable taking on a lot of machining stuff, but we don't always have the advantage of learning hands-on from uh, folks smarter than us, whether that's working in a shop or formal education and so forth. And I, um, even though I've been doing this for a while, you know, sometimes don't think, sometimes I don't realize what's out there and the right way to do stuff. And so long story short, I was using a standard two flute end mill. I uh, use them, it's probably my go-to end mill for a lot of small aluminum work. I love it, I know the feeds and speeds to run it right. And I used it for that job. So I was taking multiple depths of cuts and then coming in on a finished cut on both sides. And it was a slow op and it was bothering me. And I've used roughing tools before, but the only rougher corn cob cutter I've got is a beautiful half inch from Maritool, uh, three flute. And I love it. I use it a ton. And for no good reason, I never bought a smaller roughing end mill. So I wanted to get smarter on this job. I hope I, I get to do it again. And I went ahead and I bought this tool uh, from Lakeshore Carbide. I've started to buy a few tools from them. Everyone seems to speak so highly of them. Um, and the tool selection seems great. The website's okay. I, it's not as nice as, even in my opinion, as Maritool. And the cutters look great. I don't have a ton of experience yet with them aside from this one and, and one other. Uh, but so this is my first quarter inch roughing end mill and I pulled up G wizard ran up some cooked up some feeds and speeds Holy smokes folks. I can't believe what I was missing um, It was a mistake not to have done this years ago And it's not even a crazy expensive end mill, you know less than $20 and it should last And so what I want to do in this video is talk a little bit more about roughing end mills and the cutting philosophy behind it Because there's more advantages in my opinion than just increased speed And then we'll go ahead and take a quick look at some cuts So I don't make you guys wait on that and then for the folks that are really interested, I'm going to run some more cuts and different speeds. I'm not going to like push this tool to the limit because I've only had it a short while. I don't want to break it and I don't know it that well, but already it is, I'm impressed. Before we cut, I wanted to give a very basic introduction of roughing end mills. We'll come back after we cut and talk a lot more about the science behind them and some tricks that I've learned that I really like when I use these uh, both for job shop stuff and production stuff. So the one you can see here, this is our Lakeshore Carbide. It's a four flute, it's a quarter inch long. And then the other guy here is my Maritool half inch three flute, which is, I love this end mill. It leaves a great surface finish. I can really hog with it. And if you're interested, you can click here. There's a video I did sort of pushing this to the max with the Tormach, trying to hog out as much as I could. All right, let's go make some chips. I just faced off this block with uh, the Tormox Superfly, one of my favorite tools as well, both for material removal and surface finish. And let's throw in this quarter inch end mill now. We are going down 350 thou in two passes. So that's 175 depth of cut, obviously full width of cut, so quarter inch, 5100 RPMs max on the Tormach here. And then we are gonna start the first cut at 25 inches a minute. Well, that's frustrating. Uh, rather than edit out, I might as well just be honest. Uh, I just broke one of these tools. I've replaced it already, as you can see. Um, it was my fault. My coolant system, I've got a pneumatic uh, solenoid valve and that didn't kick on. And now is as good a time as any to explain if you're gonna run this tool, and especially if you're gonna push this tool, this is a four flute end mill, relatively small. Yes, the rougher feature is doing its job with a thin chip, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you've still got to get, evacuate those chips. And I have a high PSI uh, Trico MD coolant system, which is great. I use this tool for two, two days. Uh, I click record and I break one, not, not fun. Anyways, uh, I ran another test cut here. You can see in the middle, we're good. Uh, let's rock and roll again here uh, and lick our wounds.
Beautiful cut. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, here we are running the exact same cut, except instead of 25 inches a minute, 30 inches a minute. Here are a couple of still shots of the cut I just took so that you can see what the cut wall and cut quality looks like. I think this is spectacular. I'm very pleased with this tool. Let's take one more cut and let's run up to 35 inches a minute. Awesome, just awesome. Uh, I feel like I could run it faster. The uh, broken tool fund already got used up today, so that's all I'm gonna do. Um, let's talk a little bit about why I like this tool. The other uh, reasons might not be obvious. Uh, they're more than just meets the eye. So what's the so what about this? I remember when I first saw Ruffian End Mills and I read they make smaller chips and you can run them harder. I thought that's cool, but I kind of assumed that was it. Like most things in the machining world, there's a lot more to it. And I did a little bit of research for this video and it ends up that <clears throat> with the advent of variable helixes and carbide or insert tooling or blah, 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 there's, there's less and less use for roughing end mills in certain levels of machining. But for folks like us, there's still a great tool as you just saw right there. But when it comes to my shop and what really matters is, here's what happened. I was running this job with multiple parts I was using my go-to quarter inch number tool number 31 for me end mill and I noticed after a certain number of parts there was tool wear and it was showing in the form of a poor cut quality on that inside wall face of that pocket and that bothered me and the last thing I wanted to do was slow that slow the program down or inches a minute or shallower cuts because that's that's counterproductive so what I ended up doing was something I actually really like which is I now run two different quarter inch end mills and at the time I was, I was doing them both at the same end mill. One was my roughing end mill, it was still a finished quality end mill, but it was the one that may be a little bit older or had more wear on it. And it would do all the roughing passes, if you will. And then I would use the good tool to come in for finish passes. The good news is that I did two things. One, it ensured that the parts didn't have you know, crummy finish quality, which matters for aesthetics. Number two, um, if your tool's doing that, that means you're not holding the tolerance you should be holding. So that's a big problem for a lot of jobs as well. So that was kind of a win, except it created two problems. One, I still wasn't going any faster. And number two, I had two identical tools in there. And let me tell you, it is easy to get those screwed up. And yeah, you can label your tool holders, but um, it's, it's risk, period. And that's when I thought, let me quit being so cheap here and go buy a quarter inch roughing end mill and see if it's how much better it is. And I did that last week and I've been cutting it a bunch and I couldn't believe how much faster it is. The cut times of what I was had to do multiple depths of passes and wearing the tool out. Here's the other thing. With that roughing end mill, you're taking a much deeper cut with each pass, which means you're using more of the tool. So in other words, if you use the whole length of the tool, you're gonna get more life if you take a bunch of little passes with the very, you know, the last 50 thou of the tip. So in theory, uh, that's a win as well. The roughing tool itself should last longer. I also did a little bit of research on what roughing end mills are all about. And it ends up there's three reasons from what I can gather online about why they're better. The first is it breaks that chip like we talked about. That cut pattern causes the chip to be thin. What does that do? It allows the chip to be evacuated more easily. Also impressive, normally I would cringe at the thought of running a four flute end mill in aluminum because you'll get chip weld. That's exactly what happened when I broke that end mill a minute ago because the coolant system wasn't on. Um, the other thing it does, uh, and this is really cool, uh, apparently when you run big face mills, a 45 degree insert can take a higher chip load or higher cut load because of the geometry of the rake and the tool. 
getting beyond uh, something I feel like I can comfortably and proficiently discuss. But what it is with the roughing end mills is you've got multiple little 45 degree cutters on there, which creates a thinner chip, which apparently means you can push the tool harder simply because of the cutting geometry. That's a distinct thing from the broken chip. And the last thing is you've got multiple cutters engaged in the workpiece at the same time, and that reduces, uh, they call it tool shock from what I was reading, but it's basically, it's less of a cut than a cut, and it's more of a lot of little cuts as the bit's rotating and indexing into the part. So you can run it harder because it's less shock or, or chatter, if you will, on the actual tool itself. So it's sort of those three reasons that let us push that tool all the much harder. Um, so huge win for me to go and take something in two passes that took me maybe five before and I was running them at 15 or 17 inches a minute before. Now I can go, it looks like 30, maybe 35. And then here's the really awesome thing. Okay, so now you've got your slot roughed out and say two passes with your rougher, which were much faster. Now you've got say a 350 deep slot. You go in with your quarter inch finish end mill. You can do it with a full, full depth of cut. So you're using more of that end mills uh, tool as well and you can do it really fast you can use a tool like G wizard which will tell you that if you're only cutting say five or ten thou it's a really thin cut and you can do sort of high-speed machining where you can go at a faster inch per minute you'll handle it fine on on your machine's horsepower and chip load and so forth you'll still get a great service finish and you're speeding things up that's a real win I'm gonna work on this tool more I've got a uh, every time I break a tool it kind of makes you timid and so I'm gonna run, uh, I'm gonna run this in production. I'm gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna see how much more I can push it and I'll be sure to let you guys know. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed that. L appreciate the likes, the thumbs up, the shares. Otherwise, have a great weekend, folks. See you soon.